Hi everyone, I'm trying out something new here in this video. So I made a collage with uh, one picture on this side and one on the other side. As I'm, it's something new for me. I've never done this before because it was very hard, you know, being a homeless. But at the moment, I'm uh, for the last year I've been staying somewhere, so I've got time to do this. And these are some pictures from the previous film. Uh, Arrogance is the mother of ignorance. So I'm trying to make you a little bit less ignorant of the things going on. <laughs> so, so this guy on the left hand side, which is definitely an ancestor of President Zelensky. They even bear the same name because this guy's name of this family used to be Zelensky and they came from um, the east of uh, Hungary, but before that they probably came from the Ukraine. And they changed their names and Alexander von Zemlinsky, so they added an M, Zemlinsky, well, it's the same one. Um, and emigrated to uh, to Austria. So this is Alexander von Zemlinsky. So he's of the nobility. And this is the Jaywalker nobility or the Jay runner nobility. As the Jaywalkers, they are real runners. They ran away from Pharaoh with the Exodus. Then they ran away from the Romans in Jerusalem with the, um, the genocide of the Romans starting and the Masada. And then they ran away from Spain and the Inquisition. Then they ran away from Switzerland in 1776, where they got terrorized away. And they finally ended all up in the East, like this family here in the East of Europe. And finally it became this. So these are no jaywalkers. They are pharaohs, just like French nobility, German nobility, the British royals, the, uh, the Belgian nobility or whatever, the whole world. Every people has a nobility, including the jaywalkers. It's nothing peculiar about this. And um, so the jaywalkers, they are definitely not the uh, like the God's beloved people or a thing like this. No, no. They were Pharaoh beloved slaves. So just look at the eyes, you know, it's very similar with this here on top of it here. His descendant here has the same. Look at the nose, his little tip here. You get a little bit like blown up here. You got the same one here. The same little African ears. These are African ears, you know. Well, I mean, Egypt, it's in Africa, isn't it? Ancient Egypt. And a lot of Nubians, I can't say the N-word, everything is forbidden. So I don't know what to say anymore. So I call them the Nubians. Yeah, they got the same little round ears. Just look at it. And this guy has the same. He's got the same ears as this one here. The same little squeeze together mouth here, like this one here. With this here underneath. Same hair. The same front here of everything. It's the same lineage. I mean, it's so obvious. They bear the same name. It's nobility, as I told you, you will not become the president of a country if you're not part of Pharaoh's nobility and if you're not in a Freemason lodge. So, so I especially made this uh, collage, as it is called, which is a French word from coller which means the verb coller, it means to, um, to glue. So um, this is a glue picture, so to speak, a colla in French, it's called collage. In English, it's been pronounced college. Like in America, the college, you know, they, they probably glue something on you, you know, probably something you don't want really, <laughs> the college, the collage. Yeah. Okay. So, same lineage. I have no doubt. Zemlinsky, Zelinsky, 
the they come from the east this guy is in the east in europe that's where they come from they're all pharaohs so the next collage you see uh king louis the 14th with a fleur de lis in yellow with three things on it and uh, on blue just as this thing here it has three things and it is on blue and there is ukrainian nobility who married into the french nobility which i've shown in the video uh, arrogance is the mother of ignorance so the the ukrainian crest it's um definitely another way of a modern way of uh, showing the um the fleur de lis well actually it's not that modern it's from the year thousand but now it's a bit it's been a bit modernized maybe anyway i explain it all in my film arrogance is the mother of uh, ignorance it's all the same bloodlines they use the same symbols the same descendants and they're ruling the whole world so if anyone wants one of these uh, collages for one of your websites or whatever just give me a buzz my email is in my channel in the about section and i'll be happy to send it to you so this information gets spread um, it's free i don't want any money for it um, my work is for free anyway and um, just leave me the honor and say it that you got it from me that's all that's all i'm asking so it's a fleur de lis of the um, of the rapist king volodymyr the great so you really want to go and fight there with the uh, the symbol of a rapist king on your shoulder patch and the you know you you want you want that I don't think so. I. Eh? It's all a trap anyway. It's the Horus Matrix. They want you dead. So it's still the same as back then. Only in those days they didn't have any T-shirts, so they put it on a robe, so everybody could see it. You know, to um, to transmit the information. It's just a, a way of transmission, and now they just put it on a T-shirt. You know. But same things going on. <laughs> can you imagine King Louis is in a t-shirt like this? No? Well, I can. <laughs> Just look at this. Look at Zelensky. You know. And this was an incredibly intelligent guy, and the longest serving monarch in the whole history of mankind. Longer than Queen Elizabeth, he was a monarch and a ruling king. Longer than Ramses the Great of Egypt, this is the longest ever ruling monarch in history, Louis the Fourteenth, and highly intelligent, very intelligent. I have a lot of respect for his intelligence. Um, he wrote some things; it's uh, hardly imaginable. And of course, uh, Mr. Zelensky, he's intelligent too. And, you know, that's why they chose uh, for the job being a president, they chose a clown to do this, you know. An actor who can, um, who can memorize a script or a speech like the New Year, New Year's speech. He, he, they are good at memorizing it and saying it in the, in the right intonation with the right facial expressions. And I mean, an actor, right? So this short video is like a recap of the very long video I made. Arrogance is the mother of um, ignorance, the uh, exclusion game. And uh, it, it would have gotten a little bit too long if I would have put if I would have put this in it as well. So here we can see the fleur de lis, the same colors, yellow as the uh, Ukrainian crest the same triple thing here the sar symbol and the pharaonic reed here and it's all on a blue background 
I mean, it's the same people. It's the same symbols. It's the same bloodline. And uh, they've been ruling us for 2,000 years. Uh, uh, there's no doubt. So, and again, if you want to have these uh, screenshots, these uh, collages, uh, just give me a buzz and I'll, I'll send you the pics. Uh, try to spread it, put it on a website, and uh, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. So I'm very bad in the technique, you know, I'm, I'm not good at all this. Uh, uh, I'm a historian, I'm, I'm not in, the, um, I'm very bad in computer techniques and everything. So I wanted to do this, you know, for the last 12 years, but uh, through all the circumstances and the terror, I couldn't, I wasn't able to, um, to wrap my head around all this. So now I had a quiet moment, so, uh, so I could do this. It's just uh, part of the burnout, you know. So here you see in the month of December, uh, Zelensky with his wife and President Macron and with his uh, wife, I think her name is Brigitte, um, in Paris. So he was traveling a lot, Zelensky, you know, to get some weapons together. Um, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all theater, you know, just uh, so the people, the Ukrainians think, ah, the West, that's great. That's what we need. Hey, we, we, we want to join the European community and America, but they don't know what a dictatorship it is in the West, you know, Maybe some of them know. I mean, look at Julian Assange, what they do to that guy and what they do to me, you know, putting people like us in prison for nothing. It's, it's, it's worse than Russia. I tell you, they, they murder people in the, in the West, you know. So dear, dear Russians and Ukrainian, the West is worse. You know, murder people, put people in prison for forever. The West is not free. It's no, it's no freedom. So, but because because of the war, you know, they all hope, you know, oh yeah, let's in the in the in the Ukraine and in Russia, oh, the West, that's the good guys are helping us. We're gonna have freedom finally. No, you're not gonna have freedom. Forget it. So anyway, it's about this uh, symbol here. And I just um, make another little picture, and uh, because part of the NATO symbol is not on it, you know that's why I'm I'm bad with this, you know, because I have to measure it up. So I show another part of it. But anyway, and here this is red for the old world order, the red house of Pharaoh in the middle, where they come from, with white on the side. You know, through the ties and through these symbols, you know, they're spreading messages they always do you know still a miracle they don't have a message on their mask you know okay there we go so i just took only this part you know you all see the swastika which is of course a uh, like a photoshop inside the uh, because but that is what it is really and there is a swastika in it and it seems like she, she's doing like uh, Heil Hitler, you know, putting her hands up. But anyway, it's, it's a reference to the NATO symbol, you know. And I explain all the rest to you. There's a circle here for the concept of three, the compass. Here's a square. It says square and compass. I wonder why there's orange, which is probably a reference to the House of Orange. And uh, there is also an orange in France. Maybe that's related to that as well. But it's, it's definitely this here is a reference to this. And this is what it all, Zelensky visit. It's all about this and all the goodies, you know, they want to give. So here as well, you know, it has the concept of four, one, two, three, four. And the circle is the concept of three. So it says square and compass all over. Just as this thing here, you know, with the square here. Where's the square? And it's also always in a circle. Yeah. You know, just look at the symbols. They're everywhere. You know, it's not a coincidence.
And um, here we see Zelensky with the Ukrainian Fleur de Lis when he went to the American Congress a couple of weeks back, seeing his equivalent here, the uh, Pharaoh of, the, of America. Look at the color of the tie. Oy, exactly the same color as the mask of uh, King Tut, Tutankhamun. Uh, even quite similar ears, I must say. Very similar. So anyway, with this here, these colors, he's giving away his bloodline. And if I look at the ears, it's, uh, it's quite similar, you know. They're always giving information and messages through the ties here. And blue for the war and gold, it probably stands for white, the new world order. And um, anyway, he's got white here as well for the new world order. Look at the ties, look at the colors, people. Because a color is a... Um, um, is it gives away a certain information about uh, symbols and uh, a message it's a secret messages and they know amongst each other they know all about the colors which i'm trying to explain to you here with all the proofs so there's not it's not a coincidence he's got the uh the tutankhamun colors in his tie there's no coincidence Neither is this symbol here. There's no coincidence. It's not a coincidence either. A simple clown becomes the president of a country. Of a very recalcitrant people, you know, who, uh, who did the Maidan revolution. And they kicked out their own president. So they need a guy, you know, who makes them laugh. And I told you, laughing is one of the techniques with which they open up the back door. So they get all the the, um, the pink list killer orientation inside, you know, so you accept it, put it in a film with some humor, so you love them, then you accept it, you know. It's like wrapping it in, in a nice Christmas paper or something, you know, that's what they do. So it needed a clown who makes them laugh. So all the people say, ah, oh, he's a nice bloke, yeah, he's one of us, he makes us laugh, ah, oh, he's a good old chap, eh? And they accept him. And you know, these pharaohs with their King Tut's ties, they know very, very well. They need a very special convincing person at the head of the Ukraine. Because these people, after how many years of the Soviet empire and everything, they're not going to accept anything anymore. You know, they're full of it. You know, they had enough of it. And here we can see the butcher of Donbass having the same tie, blue and gold, golden tie. Yeah. So this is the butcher of Donbass, President Poroshenko. And uh, Poroshenko gave the orders to the um, to the pharaohs in the Ukrainian army from a distance of 40 kilometers to shoot at innocent civilians in the east of the Ukraine, which led the other pharaoh, Mr. Putin, on the other side to, um, well, to take uh, the Crimea and to attack eastern Ukraine, which they all concluded together, because the president of Ukraine, he's big pals with the president of Russia but they need to sell it to the people somehow. So this is how they do it. And how can anybody say, you know, from a, a distance of 40 kilometers away, or I think it was 47, it's 50 kilometers away, when they, shoot, they shot with those cannons into the Donbass on civilians, killing many people. Uh, I think that was 2014. Then it was the Ukrainian people doing this. No, nobody can know. You know, there was this American guy making videos about it. How does he know? He's just assuming it must have been the Ukrainians. No, the Ukrainian people didn't do this. It's this pharaoh here. And he is a pharaoh. You know, he's giving it away. He's got the, 
the King Volodymyr the Rapist symbol here. He got the King Tot uh, tie. This is the butcher of the Donbass, you know, leading to the Ukraine war like uh, in 2022, which, which is all in the conspiracy with Mr. Putin. You know, they just tried to sell it to the people. So the people um, had a reason, you know, to hate the Ukrainians. But no, the Ukrainian people didn't do this. You know, it's the pharaohs. You, you just need a couple of cannons to do this, you know, and, and to secure it, like uh, put a perimeter around it, you know, like five kilometers or 10 kilometers perimeter. So no nobody will see the guy shooting the cannons. And, and nobody did see it. You know, you just, just hear the incoming, you know, just some just the shelling, like 50 kilometers away. So evil people. It's the butcher of... Um, of the Donbass, leading to a lot of millions and millions of Russians to think that the Ukrainians did that and killing Russians in the Ukraine. No, this is not a Ukrainian. This is an, a descendant of King Tut, just like the other one from the Americas. You know, this is how they do it. You just they just swap uniforms. You know, and I mean the proofs all here. You know, with these nice collages. And um, unfortunately, I'm not going to show, you know, some, I, I did my videos on, on Putin. And so this is just, you know, because of my last video, but uh, it, it, will, it will all take too long if I do the same collage with Putin and I already did that, you know, and, uh, well, not the collages, but the, uh, the video. So it's just because it's right after that long video where I'm showing uh, all the Thai colors, with, uh, they're all the same. All these politicians, they want to kill us, you know, kill the patriarchy, as they say. So here you can see the two King Tut Thai boys standing here together. The blue and golden tie of uh, King Tut. It's not a coincidence. Always look at the ties, people. And uh, so this is his inauguration. I don't know what, I think 2014 or 15 after the Maidan. And he's um, taking the oath on this big, thick book. I have no idea what kind of a book it is. Uh, maybe some Ukrainian can tell me. It would be very important to know what is this book. It probably is a book by uh, King Volodymyr or something, uh, how to rape women or, you know. Uh, like a, a rapist manual of the um, for the first right to use prime noctis of these masters, you know, and like uh, all their various Jeffrey Epsteins and all this, the Epenstein. So, you think that's a coincidence? Same colors, right? You really think so? I tell you, it's not a coincidence. And these are very special occasions. I mean, this is the moment he's receiving uh, King uh, King Zelensky of the Ukraine uh, in front of the Congress, you know, to sell it to the American people that they uh, they need to pay more taxes to pay for all the weaponry. And here too, it's a very important moment of the inauguration. So apparently, on these in very important moments, they 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 take out the King Tot tie. Yeah, it really looks like it. So here you see King Poroshenko with his hammer, which happened to be exactly the same as the Pharaoh of e Upper Egypt. So this is the crown of the White House of the Perhet, the white, the white crown. And look, it even has this little t titty on it, like here. Like here, another titty on it, or there's a little crown or whatever. And I have all the reason to believe that this is not even a copy made in the Ukraine, but this is the original pharaonic hammer or scepter, the scepter hammer of Pharaoh to beat down the disobedient people with, together with their Freemason loincloth here, or 
uh, skirt, the Freemason skirt, that's where it comes from. And the moment he had his inauguration happening, right after he started shelling innocent civilians in the Donbass. You know. And I, I, tell, I repeat again, it was not the Ukrainian people who did this. It's the masters. You know, there's so many of these pharaonic nobility in the Ukraine, everywhere. And they just did the shelling, you know, in the name of the Ukrainian people. And all the Ruskies believed it because they all got brainwashed by the other pharaoh, the Black Prince. So I've got all the reason to believe that this is an original pharaonic scepter hammer. Even, you know, the, where they hold it, a little bit sticking out, just like here. And with this little dot on it, just like this one here. It's exactly the same apparatus. Uh, our masters. So these ones are the descendants of these ones, their ancestors, which I've been proving you for many, many years now. So I finally made it with my burnout and my situation to uh, present you these lovely collages. So here he is again, the butcher of the Donbass, you know, killing his own people with his King Tut tie. And this is the other pharaoh. You see, this is a different crown. This is the red crown of the old world's order, the old vertical rule of the Pertasser of Lower Egypt. But he's having the same hammer with his little titty on it, just like this one here. It's the same hammer, you know? So for Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, they had the same hammer which is nowadays, it is in the Ukraine. It is the very same pharaonic hammer, people, because this is so important for them. And as in those days, you know, beating up their own people and other peoples, now the butcher is beating up the Ukrainian people and the Russian people, because these people are not very obedient to Pharaoh. You know, they're 20, it's only 23% that took Pharaoh's poison in their veins. So this is a good reason to beat them up, you know. And uh, the Ukrainians, they, um, they kicked out their own president, which is another good reason to beat them up with Pharaoh's hammer. And this is what he's actually thinking at this very moment. And this, this bloke as well. Oh, he's got the same tie, I think. Blue and um, blue gold. They're all in the same conspiracy. So here's the other one, the clown of the Ukraine, the same hammer. And so now we can have a good look at these uh, things here. This is um, um, this pharaonic collar. And so here's the hammer beating down the enemies and the people. And this looks like the rudder on these boats, you know, in, in, in Venice, the gondola, gondola. And look, here's this thing, which is on, on the, at the front, at the bow of those um, Egyptian boats, which the Ital Italians are using, exactly the same. So I don't remember what this hieroglyph, what it means, but uh, there it is. I, they are the sunbarks of Pharaoh. And this is what they put in, the, at the bow. So, I wonder what he's thinking here. I think I've got a pretty good idea. He's already dreaming of total control over the Ukrainian people after the war. You know, and look how he's squeezing it. I think, yeah, yeah. Let's beat them down with their Maidan uprising. We're going to beat them down. There he is again, the clown of the Ukraine, together with his ancestors. And I was thinking the color of Lapis Lazuli, but this is not Lapis Lazuli, this is Turquoise. And Turquoise is a reference to the pharaonic goddess Hathor. And Hathor is the protector of women. 
Well, let's kill the patriarchy, right? Got that stuff again. So, and here we can see the sun hieroglyph with this thing in the middle. Usually it's round, but it can be a square. And with the two bars on each side, which I filmed for you in the Pharaoh show a lot. And uh, look at how the clown, how he's smiling, how he's laughing. He's laughing his head off. And this is one of the two pillars, Yashin and Boas. In, uh, I guess this is the uh, Ukrainian parliament or something. So it's carved in wood, the Yashin and Boas, the two pillars of Freemasonry. And it looks like a typical Freemason, this guy here. And these things here, it's of course the top of a pyramid here. Now I've got cut off a little bit. But... So this is Lapis Lazuli, and it is a reference to Hathor. Oh. Let's kill the patriarchy, eh? And this is the... Uh, it's also very much related to the... Uh, to the Horus Matrix. Let's kill the fathers so we can raise the, um, the boys new from scratch into obedient little boys. So there will be no more father-to-son tradition and, uh, you know, this is... Um, the stubborn Eastern mentality, father to son, you know, they want to break it with the hammer of Hathor. So they can recreate the, uh, the Eastern Europeans into little obedient Westerners. So there's the clown again with the, uh, the pharaonic hammer of Hathor with the turquoise. Kill the patriarchy stuff. Here you can see part of a bull. I cut it off because uh, he got the hammer again. Yeah. The pharaonic hammer. Just grabbing the citizens by the hair. <coughs> Which is the situation we got in the West. Is exactly this situation. And this is what they want for the Ukraine as well. In the West, you know, we have to be obedient little dwarfs. You know, you can't be a man. You can't defend yourself. You can't even have a fight. Um, and the women are always right. You know, the women, you have to, you, have to you, you need to have yourself beaten up by women in the West, which I've shown you on several occasions. When there is a divorce, the women takes all the children. So this is the image of man. So then why, where well, the whole narrative in the West is based upon obedience, making, making little soy boys out of our sons, then why all of a sudden the entire hero narrative in the Ukraine, it's a, it's a total discrepancy between the West and the Western narrative in the Ukraine. I only talk about her heroism, be a hero. While in the West, this is completely forbidden to be a hero. You know, so be careful, dear Ukrainians. Very soon after the war, when all the heroes are dead through the Horus Matrix, you will have to obey the same narrative as in the West and be a little a little nothing, a little obedient slave, a little dwarf, just like this dwarf here. Otherwise, uh, King Pharaoh here, he's going to beat you up with a stick. You know, and this is the aim of the Ukraine. Uh, so be careful. I mean, why the difference and the discrepancy? It's a total discrepancy between the narrative in the West and the Western narrative for the Ukraine. So you have to ask yourself, what is going on? They're talking about hero this, hero, Ukrainian hero. He was a hero. Give him a medal. We want to attract the Western heroes. Wait a minute, Western heroes? Here we can't even be a hero. You can't even defend yourself. You know, you have to obey and say, yes, Mr. President, uh, like, uh, like Mr. Jesus tied upon the cross. You know, you got your hands tied up. You can't defend yourself. You got your feet nailed. You can't run away. Not even the jaywalkers can run anymore, or the jay runners. 
You can only nod your head and say, yes, Mr. President, please don't knock me on my head with your pharaonic hammer. You know, and mark my words, he's going to reveal his true identity very soon. Mark my words. I know what's coming. So just think of the, you know, of the uh, discrepancy in the narrative, although it's the same ones having the narrative. You know? They just want to lure you into a war, you know, so you die. They want to get rid of all the warriors. So for the next step and the, and the, the, the final blow on humanity until they, they make total control, arti in, artificial intelligence robots out of us, they have to get rid of all the warriors. So this is why you know, they want to kill all the warriors. They don't want any more men who will defend humanity. And they've almost succeeded. They will succeed. Uh, I believe it's the end of humanity anyway. No, they're too stupid. So here's the uh, Donbass butcher again with Pharaoh's hammer with the colors of Hathor. And uh, can anybody tell me what this extraterrestrial, uh, what the alien is doing here? Definitely having a helmet, huh? And I can't see the eyes. He's got like a, a screen in front of it. And this here. So this is the, uh, again, the Pharaoh of Upper Egypt of the... Um, the White House, the bare head. So they both had the hammer. Look at his eyes, you know. You trust this guy? So apparently a lot of people didn't trust him, so it needed a clown. Now they've got a clown. So here we see Poroshenko, he probably has his hammer in his other hand. And um, together with this uh, pink list killer here, who's doing the conspiracy symbol of the Freemasons. So they are definitely in a conspiracy here. And the organization of uh, Sir Elton John, the pink list killer, his organization are saying these sort of lovely things. Destroy the patriarchy in pink with the unicorn and this red eyes here, which is one of their symbols. So what's going on? I mean, if this is what they want to do, destroy the patriarchy, and he's definitely part of them, otherwise he wouldn't be together with the president of a big country. And who, you know, giving this symbol away here. So what are they talking about? Eh? Which is quite obvious, of course. And they got, again, they got the rainbow in their symbol, you know, with the lightning and all this. You know, this is a... Um, a reference to the deluge with a lot of lightning. And after the deluge, uh, the guy up in the skies, the all powerful bloke, he said, uh, well, I'll never do this again. That's why I show a rainbow. So that's why these here, they get overconfident because they know that the divine power are never gonna do it again. So they're getting very overconfident, as you can see here, and saying destroy the patriarchy. Or is he just doing like he doesn't know about this? Well, of course he does. Of course he does. All these pink list killers, they know about this. And this is actually what's happening. You know, killing the patriarchy for the Horus Matrix. Kill the fathers, the patriarchy. Pater, which means father. And um, so raise the kids new without the father. So these ones here can grab them, you know, for their obvious reasons. So in this collage, we can see it all happening here. Right? 
So if you want to have the collage, just give me a buzz and I'll send it to you all for free. And of course, this Pharaoh of Russia here wants the same. They all want to kill the patriarchy and have the man kill each other. Only he is having the opposite narrative because the Roskies want to hear something else. They don't want to hear anything about what these pink list killers say. So then these pharaohs just tell the people what they want to hear. And at the same time, there will be such a gap between the Ruskies and the Ukrainians and how they are politically indoctrinated that it sets the um, all you know for a war you know so when there's such a gap in their uh, such a difference in in way of thinking and you know what they want um to create a a war so this is why he's um telling the opposite so as you can see here how he's holding his hand and all that with a cannon which is going to be the result of this kill the patriarchy they're all the same in spite of the fact they're telling us completely different you know stories as this one is telling the russian people a completely different story as um the pharaohs in the west and in in the ukraine are telling their people you know so um so the people you know so they won't accept each other's ideas anymore a, another discrepancy as a basics for war upon a difference in skin color a difference in race or a difference in language a difference in religion a difference in wealth this is what they always do creative difference and one of the ways to create a difference is by the narrative of the different pharaohs who are uh, quite successfully indoctrinating the uh, different peoples around the earth to create two blocks. You know. And the masters, they use several techniques to, to achieve their goals. So this is the Bund Deutscher Medals with the Nazi symbol here. Germans during the Second World War doing exactly the same things as these Ukrainian women with high heels. Can you imagine? You know, because these this is the Horus Matrix, you know. So the men think, oh, we have to defend these lovely legs because we love these legs. You know, so they all die in a war because of these lovely legs and the rest what goes with it, you know. Well, actually, the women, they can defend themselves much far more better than a man, I'll tell you. So, okay, well. So, this is the Horus Matrix, you know, kill the man. And they use all these techniques like the two ingredients, war and reproduction. So this is what they want, you know, uh, kill the man and then re reproduce, make babies and, uh, and, and make them new from scratch, not anymore after the image of a, rec of a creation, the image of the divine, no. Another image by the masters, you know, mold them into pink list killers and obedient obedient slaves and they use these women for it um, at the head of this organization was a uh, this uh, pink list killer woman with her friend Jutta Rudiger or Rudiger and um, I suppose it's the same thing going on another pink list killer at the top of this you know uh, it's always the same thing. It's um, it's a big evil which we are against. That try to 
destroy humanity. Oh. And um, yeah, so another collage for you. And in the end, the masters who are using definitely the same colors here as their ancestors, blue and gold or blue and white. The gold is here, an owl and all this pharaonic stuff on it. This was on St. James Island, Jeffrey Epstein von Epenstein. Remember the Göring Castle von Epenstein by the Jay Walker nobility. Just pharaohs. Forget about Jay Walker. They're pharaohs. And um, so, because there's no, there are no more men. The patriarchy is gone. So there are no more men to defend the children. And this is the result. Raping children here and these sort of things. And nobody's going to do anything against it. And that's the result of all these wars and all the horrors matrixes. And we see it happening again. On the left side, I filmed in Boulogne-sur-Mer in France an original copy of the pharaonic sun bark and see how they steer it at the back, you know, like, uh, like a rudder. And this is an original gondola boat for the tourists. I guess in these days they, it wasn't for the tourists yet. This is a old, very old picture, maybe from the 19th century or something. And to see how it's exactly the same shape of the boat, like a banana, and uh, with a cabin in the middle, and uh, with the same rudder. And this here, what I will explain to you later, is the hieroglyph of uh, meaning the feather of Ma'at, the original pharaonic hieroglyph. And in fact, um, Ma'at, she's very much the goddess, she's very much related to what you see here. I'll explain it to you in the middle, in a, in a, in a moment. So this was back then. This is like, um, 100 years ago or 150 years ago in Venice, in Italy. So the pharaohs also had a people. They had the gods, here are the gods. Then there were the pharaohs who became Europe's nobility and nobility all over the world. Their slaves, the J, the J runners, they ran away. And they also had a people. And actually, when pharaohs and their gods probably went to Europe, first they went to Greece, and then they went to, uh, to Italy and founded the Roman Empire. Then, uh, through the marriage of Cleopatra with Caesar, Egypt became a, a Roman province. And we know at a certain time, all the people in Egypt, they left. Where did they go? Because the Arabs who are living there now, they are not the people of ancient Egypt, not at all. They came from Saudi Arabia, especially after the uh, Islamic conquest in the seventh century, uh, not even before that. So where did they go, the people of Egypt, when Egypt became a Roman empire? Well, they went to Rome. And this is the result. The sun bark became the Venetian gondola. You know, exactly the same boat. And I explained this in a, in a moment. This is the, uh, the feather of Ma'at, which is very important for the sun bark. So it seems very far-fetched that the Italians of today, that they are the people of, uh, of ancient Egypt. Not the pharaohs, not the slaves, not the gods, no, the people. The people, you know, like who, who were rowing boats at the River Nile in those days. Because I've noticed the Italians are very different from the rest of the Europeans. And they, um, they brought havoc to Europe and the Europeans. 
several times. Of course, with the Romans, with the big genocide on the on the European tribes, just like they did later on on the Indian tribes. They they did the same on the European tribes, you know, on the white man's tribes. They did exactly the same. And then, of course, with the Nazis. So every time. And Nazism, it started in Italy with Mussolini. The word Nazi is Italian from the Italian word nationalismo, which is written with a Z, with a Z in American, as well as in English or in German is written with a T. So the word Nazi cannot come from the German language as it comes from Italian. So every time out of Italy, it rains havoc on the European tribes and on the Europeans. So they can't really be European, can they now? And in fact, they're not. And this is one of the proofs. And, and this is because uh, Egypt, ancient Egypt became a Roman province and they all came over. At a certain time, Egypt was empty and uh, it became a desert. And um, so these are official pharaonic hieroglyphs. You know, you see, it's, just, it's, it's very much the same, you know, with the rudder at the back, just like this guy here. Only this is missing. And, uh, and of course, these are just the hieroglyphs, but this is the real thing. So this is a depiction, actually, of this here. And I guess this was the original thing, because this is the, the hieroglyph uh, of the feather, the feather of Ma'at which I explained to you. And um, so the Italian immigrants, you know, we're talking about immigrants, people talk about Turkish immigrants and Pakistani immigrants or African or Chinese or whatever, but nobody seems to talk or to think about it anymore. Uh, actually, the biggest load of immigrants in Northern and Central Europe, they are Italians. And they're the first ones, but they sort of integrate. You don't hear from them anymore, except for the killings and the mafia stuff and uh, having a bigger economy than the entire European Union, probably with the, you know, the mafia and all the illegal stuff, which, which is going on. And I already explained to you who's the mafia, you know. They were the Knights Templars who settled down and after the Crusades, they got themselves women, they made families and they started doing the same stuff as they used to do, the Knights Templars. And especially in Sicily, so they became families. They got women because inside the Knights Templars, it was forbidden to have a woman and a wife and children. It was a brotherhood and it still is. So they started to create families. So there you got your, your mafia families who come out of the Knights Templars, very closely knit, you know, just, and they're, they are like, like an army, you know, with ranks and all this, like the Knights Templars. And all armies come out of the Knights Templars. So, as I told you, there's a legal mafia and an illegal mafia, and they all work together. You know, and in, I've never seen any place in the world like Sicily where there's so many Templar commanderies. There's no other place with so many. So this is definitely the sunbark of Egypt. And you find these in Italy. Eh? Well, Italy is not far away from Egypt. It's just across the dip. You know, and I noticed the same thing with uh, there are only two types of people who never take hitchhikers. And in Europe, you know, sort of the Europeans, the only ones who don't take hitchhikers are the Italians. Even Muslims and Turks and Arabs, they take hitchhikers, but not the Italians, you know. And the other ones are the Nubians, they never take hitchhikers. So they are different, you know. And, you know, when you go hitchhiking on an Italian motorway, they always hassle you, you know, call up the police. It's, it's really a fascist country, and you know? I, I don't feel safe there. There's something, there's something going on there, you know, like uh, people call it shittily nowadays, and uh, it's not far off. So we really have to, everything is going tits up nowadays, and we really have to question our history 
and question everything to find out by whom we're being ruled and who are, whom are their collaborators. So I was going to explain this hieroglyph to you. Well, here it is. This is the hieroglyph of the feather of Ma'at. And these arms here going up, it's the Ka, which is the soul, uh, actually, when alive. And uh, on the contrary to the Ba, is when you die, the Ba. So when you die, according to the Pharaonic uh, stories, you have to take the sun bark on the river Nile, which is going to the underworld when you, the moment you die. And then Ma'at, the goddess Ma'at, the goddess of justice. Now we have Lady Justice with the sword and the scales, which is uh, Ma'at, who became Themis in Greece. And uh, in Egypt, she was still called Ma'at, the word magistrate, magistrate. You know, it's after the word Ma'at, actually. So this is the feather. And Ma'at, she came with a feather to your soul when you're going, entering the, the afterlife. And when the weight of your heart equaled this feather, so being very light or being lighter, then it was okay. You could go to paradise or to the afterlife. When your heart was heavier than the feather of Ma'at, you were going to hell, where the uh, Seth, the lord of the underworld, was. So the soul, this is the soul, Ka, it was measured with the feather of Ma'at. That's why the feather is inside the soul, which you can see here. And we find it here on the boat in Italy and uh, on the water which is representing the Nile or, the, or the, um, the Hades River going into the underworld and where uh, your, um, you, you were being um, uh, judged for your life, you know, like a magistrate, magistrat, ma'at. And... Um, so this is definitely a sunbark, or which which they even used in ancient times like this, with this on it probably. And this is why we find it in Italy, because they are the people of Egypt. And that's why Italians are different, and that's why we find them everywhere in Europe. The uh, you know, working for the pharaohs, especially after the Second World War, when so many European men were dead, so they needed new workers. And uh, that's all where, that's all what the pharaoh, pharaoh's nobility, where they are interested in. And, uh, and there are people who know it in Italy, but the people themselves, they don't, they don't know it anymore. You know, after three generations, the people, you know, the dumb sleeple, they don't even know anymore where they come from or who their grandparents were. They don't know it after, you know, 2,000 years later. But some of them do, especially the, uh, the mafia families, Freemasons, nobility. They know it and we can see it, you know. That's why the uh, progress of civilization, you know, it really started in Europe through Greece and then absolutely the, the military progress it started in italy with the romans and how how is it possible all of a sudden out of nothing well it's because of egypt you know that's where they went to and then when the germanic tribes they ransacked rome well they came to france pharaohs but the people they stayed here with their you know gondola gondola you know pharaonic gondola and especially for the Northern Europeans and the Central Europeans, you know, um, who nowadays are really slaves because of all this. They have stolen our land just like they did with the Indians. And we're just, they're slaves, you know, they are, um, the, the Northern and Central Europeans, they, uh, they are really lost in all this, you know.
So I'm just trying to give you some information who the real enemy is. You know, it's Pharaoh's nobility. What, what more proofs do you need? Again, to the right is the one I filmed in France, which is an exact copy of the sunbark, the Egyptian sunbark. You know, I mean, why, why do you need a hut if it's something mythological, you know? It was also used. That's why there is a hut, you know, so people could sit in it, which you could see in the other picture, which was used in, in Venice and probably all over Italy. Uh, exactly the same form. It's the same boat, you know, with this coming out of the water, like the front and the back. So you can you can turn around easy, you know, with all these canals here. and. Um, and here, this is uh, Pharaonic. This is the feather of Ma'at, to weigh your soul, and uh, to uh, compare it to the weight of the feather of Ma'at, your soul. And this is, it's like Christianity, you know, like if you, you know, only if you're a good one, you go to paradise, if you're obedient, if, you're, if your soul is heavier than her feather, then you go to hell. You know? But this is not how it works. You know, the like the ancients taught us, I believe that you only go to paradise if you're brave. You know, you don't. It's wrong what they're saying. I mean, if 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 I were a god, would I take somebody in paradise who is an obedient slave, a sleeper and a sheeple, all his life? You know, who get who who never stands up, who has no character? Would I like that one near me? You know, in 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 paradise and play chess with him? No way, man! I wouldn't. I would take somebody brave, you know, who has a soul who has a character, who stands up for justice, who stands up for what he believes in. This is the way it is. It's logic, isn't it? Yeah, look at it. The whole building here in Venice with all the arches here and this here, it looks pharaonic here, huge. And, and here it looks oriental with all these arches. You know, this is not European. And uh, well, the Venetians they uh, they 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 were in the Crusades. Eh? They they did a lot together with the Knights Templars. So here we see this is the soul, the arms like this. This is probably Maat, and she is weighing everything together. You know, this is the uh, the scarabee for the reincarnation, and there are seven. You know, the concept of three here, and here's the concept of four. I mean, this is where the Freemasons, they got it all from, the concept of three and four. And she's weighing everything like, you know, weighing the soul, the car. This is the car, the arms like this. If it is uh, not too heavy to go into the afterlife, where the rulers only want the obedient ones. You know? And... Uh, Here's uh, Amun Ra, of course. And uh, well, it's the same boat. And here again, you've got the feather of uh, Ma'at. And again, here, this is what I filmed in Boulogne sur Mer many years ago. And this looked very medieval, making new again with a medieval uh, crest and everything here. And here the feather of Ma'at with the gondola, the pharaonic sunbark for the tourists. And if you just cross the dip from Venice to Africa, where well, you get into Egypt. And here again, a hieroglyph with the sunbark with the rudder here, just as this guy, he has the rudder here. And uh, the same form of the boat uh, with the Ma'at feather. An old church here with all the Roman stuff on it, and uh, know, Roman em enemies. So apparently, this is a a good concept. I mean, this is uh, going on for six thousand years, probably the uh, the concept of making a boat like this. So that would be a pity if you leave Egypt like they did two two thousand years ago not take their technology of uh, boat building with them and this is what happened 
Uh, apparently, it's a good technique. Eh? It's quite steerable because you know the, the you don't have to push the end and the beginning through the water because it's out of the water. You know? It's only for you know to stand. So there's only a little bit of part which is really in the water. So it's really uh, maneuverable. I suppose that's why you only need one stick and a thing to hold it just like this one here where it's also out of the water here and here and uh, so it's a good technology and uh, you know why not hang on to it and bring it with you to the colonies and the colonies was uh, Europe so I really hope that the ancient god of ancient Egypt are not too happy with Homi Ross. And it seems that there are like um, this guy here with this alien alien bow. He's like looking, where's Homi Ross? I'm gonna shoot him. And he's very confident with his arms like crossed here. We'll get him. Don't worry, we'll get him. This one here. I'm on the lookout. I've got special abilities I can see in the future. We'll get Homie Ross. We'll get him.